You might find them going door to door in a neighborhood near you. Young men in shirts and ties hoping to convert people to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, one of the fastest growing religions in America, indeed the world. This missionary work is part of a demanding two-year rite of passage, a journey once taken by Mitt Romney. ABC's Bob Woodruff brings us this look inside. Hi, how are you doing today? We're missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The two-year mission is a rite of passage for most young Mormon men. Have you ever seen missionaries in this neighborhood before? There are 55,000 missionaries serving around the world, and the church allowed our team rare access into their world for two days of door knocking, teaching. It's called the vision of the tree of life. And community service. I am a Mormon. I'm a Mormon. Mormons have never been so visible. While Mitt Romney's presidential candidacy may have ushered in a Mormon moment in this country, the church remains largely a mystery to those outside of the faith. I'm Elder Dustin. I'm sorry? Elder Dustin. Elder? Yes, sir. Right here on my name tag, if that helps. Yeah, yeah, that, that does help. <laughs> Elder is a church term for the missionaries, though at age 21 and 20, they are anything but old. I like your saints hat. Elders Zachary Dustin and Bert Curtis are serving on a mission in Laplace, Louisiana, a long way from home in Utah. I didn't know too much about it. You know, people would always tell me, oh, you're going to have jambalaya and gumbo. It's going to be great. I'm like, what's jambalaya and gumbo? I don't know what that <laughs> is. Let's go zigzag. The church determines, they believe with divine guidance, where missionaries are placed. Mitt Romney served in Bordeaux, France, where he has said he learned about rejection trying to convince the French to give up wine. We're missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay, we have our own religion, thank you. Okay, that's okay. In the Deep South, the missionaries often come across people with deeply rooted religious traditions. What church do you attend? <laughs> Glory of God. Well, would it be all right if I, uh, yeah. if I left you with a little pamphlet? Oh, uh, not really. There's a lot of people who, who have faith in Christ and maybe it's our fault, maybe it's something they've heard, but for some reason they don't understand that we're trying to add to that faith in Christ. Would you like to come in? But then they meet Yvonne, who immediately invites them inside. Do you have a faith in Christ yourself? Yes, I do. We're here to, to add to that, and so we would like to, to leave one of these little pamphlets with you. Okay. Because what's contained in that pamphlet is, is a message about the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What exactly do they mean when they talk about the gospel? A key difference between the Latter-day Saints and other Christians is that Mormons believe that after the resurrection, Jesus came to the ancient Americas in a journey described in the Book of Mormon. While some continue to associate Mormons with polygamy, It's my night, Marjean. Get out of here, now. And shows like Big Love add to the public's fascination with the topic, the church banned polygamy in 1890, though some break off fundamentalist sects have continued the practice. The material that's most frequently asked for is copies of the Book of Mormon. This is the Baton Rouge Mission headquarters. That go okay? That was, that was awesome. We pretty much just killed it, I guess. President Jim Wall is a surrogate parent to the missionaries who are only allowed to call home twice a year. Even though they pay most of their own way, missionaries are required to turn in receipts for everything down to their gas miles. I think if I were a corporation, I'd hire missionaries <laughs> because they have such good training. The missionaries work in pairs. Why do you keep these couples, these two young men, together? They can't even split apart except when they go to the bathroom. And it's just for safety's sake. Somebody didn't wave a magic wand and take away all their the dumb. <laughs> Once in a while, they make bad choices. When you're with a companion, it's harder to make really bad choices. All right, what you think, Skip? The rules are strict. No television, no personal phone calls, no coffee or tea. Elder Dustin looks nothing like his old ID photo, and they dress up even in the heat. This breeze isn't bad. We always wake up, try to be up by uh, before 6.30. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. By evening, they are ready for a home-cooked meal at the home of the Browns, a family of local Mormons, once converts themselves. They have gathered to welcome newcomer Gloria Adamson to the table. Is it likely that you're going to be converted? Me and God are tight. Right now, the way I am, I suppose we could get a lot tighter <laughs> if, you know, if I repent and do whatever, but um, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Are there a lot of sins? That I've done? Yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And she says she's not ready to stop. Are you sorry for drinking? No. So you're going to be hard to be converted. Exactly. And I smoke <laughs> cigarettes, too. You think you got a pretty good shot to bring her over? It's not really about that. As we've taught her, you know, we're there to, to build her faith in Christ. I don't want our missionaries to think about a number. I don't want a person to think that they're a number. But the church does track converts, and their statistics show nearly 300,000 converts were baptized in 2011, all taught at one point by missionaries. Yeah, coming in. And it's moments like this one that seem to excite the missionaries the most. Rick seems eager to hear their message. And the Book of Mormon is a record of, of just that, the people that lived here in the ancient Americas. And now Christ isn't just the savior of Jerusalem and the Middle East, but he's the savior of the world. That's right. They make an appointment to return. It was good to meet you, Rick. I've been a missionary for like 20 months, knocked on countless doors, talked to countless people, and the, the excitement doesn't go away. The excitement to, to tell people about what I know, what's brought me happiness and joy, it doesn't end. I'm Bob Woodruff for Nightline in Laplace, Louisiana.